All right. Last year when I attended uh, DevNet Create, the first one, I was blown away by the enthusiasm and the participation of uh, developers. It was not like any other crea uh, Cisco event I participated prior to that. And this year when the invite came along to, part uh, to present, I just jumped on it. And uh, thanks to Cisco and DevNet Create organizers, and uh, great to be here. So I'm going to present about IoT and AI, the two technologies, why it's a marriage made in heaven. And uh, we'll talk about some of the challenges achieving that as well, like in any other marriage. But first, let me introduce myself. I'm Ram Raj, and uh, I'm a co-founder CEO of a startup called Newbay. I'm a technologist with the enterprise companies, lucky enough to uh, develop and deliver some of the enterprise products which are powering the internet and also various data centers in the world. Uh, I'm also an open source enthusiast. Uh, I incubated OpenStack at Cisco Project under Lou Tucker and uh, also founding member of Neutron OpenStack Project. So right now I'm trying to help to build the company New Bay. All right, let's start with the definition of what is IoT. So many of you know that, but that is the definition given by ITU, uh, the Standardization Committee. But the rest of us, IoT is a system of layers. The layers start out with sensors, sensors deployed in various environment, be it a connected factory or hospitals, or it's on wearable computing, which you are wearing it on you which make use of well-known, well-defined protocols, LoRaWAN, or even a uh, wired network to talk to the compute layer, where the compute layer, it could be on the edge, or in the data center, or it could be on the cloud. But single purpose of enabling these apps, the apps which are developed to meet a particular business requirement uh, or, uh, in this case, even a personal EKG, which is tracking the health of a, uh, a person's heart. Each layer comes with certain challenges. All of them are not solved. For example, device management on the firmware upgrades and keeping track of it, security aspects of tens and thousands of sensors in your network. And in the compute layer, you got to worry about latency, you got to worry about different data types, this uh, sensors are emitting data with, and also message bits. Lots of these challenges are there, and the industry vendors like Cisco, they are solving those problems. But today we are gonna talk about that, where the computer layer sending, publishing the data. The number one ask from the customers is, what do I do with the data? I've enabled I IoT, sensors, everything. I'm collecting data. What do I do with that? That's where most of our discussion today is gonna happen. Why? Why exactly we need to worry about IoT? If you see that the impact of IoT is there, not only economic, it's also in the social, economic, and everywhere. Uh, that we can't deny. This is a, um, a report from McKinsey. Though you may not agree with the trillions of dollars it is quoting, we can't deny, we all could agree on its impact on socioeconomic and personal lifestyle and also at least in billions of dollars economic input. In the same study, one startling thing I read, that is only 1% of data is used by the companies today. Uh, 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 this study is done in 2015, so in 2018 the problem remains the same. It may be 10%, but making use of rest of the data to do optimization prediction, that makes the impact of IoT much more for businesses and even for the lifestyle and socioeconomic patterns. I was asking myself a question, why? Why is it happening, right? So before we get on to this why, answering this why question, let's look at the characteristics of the data generated by IoT sensors. If you see, the sensors generate structured data, unstructured data, time series data, but what makes them unique in a way is the sensors also embed some of the meta information about location and personality, about the person, the way that the sensor is located, how it is uh, uh, used, and that meta information, which are transient and many times it is ephemeral. The rate at which the data comes in is 
uh, at unprecedented scale. Because the sensors are distributed across the network, across the system, we are talking about tens and thousands of sensors, aligning them all with one particular timestamp to get the polling frequency matched across the network, it's very difficult. So you will end up having the data for the applications, missing values, noisy data, because of its different frequencies and various reasons. So this makes the data itself having quite a lot of uncertainty built into it. And this may be a good problem, lots and lots and lots of data, but it could be another problem of handling them all. According to the study from Cisco, there would be 850 zettabytes of data, humans, machines, things will generate by 2021, of which only 10% is usable data or persistent data, the rest of them are ephemeral, just transient data. So what it uh, creates is, how do I keep this data consumable for applications so that they can increase that uh, 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 utilization of this data? So I'm gonna call it IoT analytics infra, but I'm gonna expand on that, what I mean by infra later, but some of the capabilities required by this infra is recognize complex patterns, not just one individual stream of data coming from individual sensors or group of sensors, but across the system as a whole. And model relationship and dynamic transactions, the set of servers, uh, sensors in a typical very bare bone, um, uh, example would be a relationship between a smoke detector, fire alarm, and uh, your sprinkler controlling uh, system. And ability to process and look forward, not only because the data is a transient at a high rate, you gotta have an ability to process in, in line and look forward so that you can do certain pre, uh, um, uh, prediction and optimization uh, applications. And this is a must. You gotta handle uncertainty. So let's look at what are the current technologies and solutions uh, available today. Rule-based expert systems. This is common, predominant in industrial IoT segments where an expert creates rules based on primarily from his knowledge. As you can see, human mental process is a very complex thing to map it into algorithm and map it as a rule. And the uh, effectiveness of these systems are how good is the collaboration between the developer and the domain expert. And the more important thing is there is no learning. Learning is, I'm talking about the machine learning parallel, but there is nothing dynamic about it. It's a static and it's brittle. Okay, what's the next one? Um, we all know about big data, ML-based analytics. This is simplified uh, steps involved in it. First, a data scientist comes in and asks for the business requirements, defines the questions. He uh, rolls out a big data to collect this data, which is capable of collecting time series, high frequency sensor data, and you do a data harvesting out of it and map it to an ML algorithm based on what is the requirement, what are the requirements, and provide the insights. There are some challenges with this. 70% of the time, approximately, if not 70% of the time, significant amount of the time a data scientist spends in data processing or particularly data harvesting. When he does that, some of the complex uh, relationship and patterns that data has, you might lose it, which may hold some golden information for business optimization. And here again, a domain expertise of that particular segment and a ML expertise is required to build a good system. So what's next? Uh, anyone read about this master algorithm book? Any of you? I highly recommend this book, Master Algorithm. AI purists, they've agreed with Pedro Dominguez who is a professor at the University of Washington and a colleague of my co-founder, Dr. Rajesh Rav, and uh, is a good friend. He has categorized AI in terms of five tribes. The previous two, previous slide categorization, I'm not saying they're not AI. In fact, the support vectors and all of them are shown in ML. That's part of one of the uh, tribes that Dominguez talks about. In this, one of the tribes, uh, tribe 
uh, you may heard about it, but not with this terminology, connectionists. Connection is nothing but deep learning. It, deep learning is one form of connection. It's, deep learning is fantastic. Using CNN with the enough data set, it solves your image analysis, image um, recognition, all those patterns, uh, all those applications, fantastic. Deep learning helps you out. But, uh, and it's efficient, scalable, all those things. But you can fool deep learning networks. As you can see right hand side, you can fool a, uh, a network with bikes sending this photograph saying Robin and Cheetah it may come back, and this is a, there is a research paper written on that. But that is not, uh, because it doesn't have the capability to handle uncertainty. So what do we do? Let's revisit what is record. Recognize complex patterns, model relationship, process and look forward in time, ability to handle uncertainty. If you map it to the AI terminology, the first two are online learning. What you need is online learning. The second one is ability to do a temporal memory, a kind of a brain works, keep track of what is there, what is gonna happen, look ahead, handle uncertainty. So the question comes, time for a new AI model? I don't know, I'm just leave that question to you. But at New Bay, we are working on a uh, technology that helps to solve this problem. Uh, nothing captures what we are doing, how we are solving it, um, like a demo, right? So I just wanted to show you a, a, a simple demo of, uh, so this one is a, uh, to show the capabilities of our technology, which could do online learning, prediction, anomaly recognition, I'm generating a very simple sine wave generator, well-known frequency, well-known. Uh, it is generating it from my laptop, sends it to the product, which is cloud-based, but it can be deployed in any way. Uh, um, the important thing to note here, let me explain some of the panels. Here, the set of sensors sending the red sine wave. This is the original input. And this is, blue is my product trying to learn, online learn. It is not trained network. It is trying to learn what is the input is and it's trying to figure out, predict what it could be. And this one shows the anomaly. Initially, when we are learning, our frequency, our accuracy is very low and we are trying to learn. Everything is anomaly for us. As we are learning, in approximately two, two and a half cycles, we are able to see the characteristics of input, which is a time series sine wave of this frequency. And our accuracy rate is going up. We declare this is a healthy input, right? So that basically shows online learning. What happens if I change the input? This just to show the uh, uh, scale of capability. Now I'm changing the frequency. If you notice, the online learning showed you a little bit of anomaly here, there. So when I change the frequency to a lower frequency, it, it is predicting this throughput, the frequency should be of T plus 12 here. It is different, so it has raised an anomaly. As the data keeps coming in, again, it learns the new stream of data and is able to predict ahead another T plus 12 times times in this 250 millisecond or something. So Basically, what we're saying is that technology can do online learning, predict, look ahead in time, and anything differs from that, it is going to raise an anomaly. And what happens if we go back to the uh, original cycle, I mean, uh, the frequency? So here, I'm going back to the same frequency when I started it. It converges very fast in half a cycle. The reason is it has a temporal memory of pattern recognition. So it's basically, the capabilities of this technology, what it enables you is building the products from that particular infra and uh, enables developing some uh, real cool technologies, uh, applications for business optimization beyond what is being used today. So this is the result of um, 15 or 20 years of research that my co-founder Rajesh Rav has, and his team has done in University of Washington, UW. Seattle, and uh, he's author of two books in brain, uh, uh, BCI-related research papers, and also Bayesian brain models. 
And uh, my second, third co-founder is uh, Satish. He is a mobile platform guy. He has founded a company, took it to IPO. The platform that uh, he has created handles half a billion A2P messages. So basically, we know how to build enterprise products. We are trying to, Newbie is trying to solve the problems what we talked about in the industrial IoT segments. So if any of you or if your customers or uh, generally you want to chat about the points that I made, uh, please contact us. And uh, that's all I have.